Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Rex, you're muted and your camera's not on. Yeah, I'm just getting there, John. Oh, okay. I'm 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 putting on uh, slacks for and taking off my pajamas. So hold on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm uh... okay. There we go. Ta-da! And haven't moved a single book in a no, week. He hasn't. Did you get the notice from Zoom that starting July 19th, uh, they will automatically make every meeting have a password and a waiting room? You have to go in individually and, and uh, change that. I didn't know that. Yes, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, John Hook, welcome. You're muted, sir. Hey, good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, John, how are you? Good, how are you, sir? Good. Um, is, it, is it morning where you are, John, or? Uh... Oh, I don't know why I said good morning. <laughs> I right. just finished with someone on the West Coast, so it's like, okay. Okay. And it's still, it was still morning out there when I left, talking five, ten minutes ago. All right. So, uh, Per your email earlier today, uh, we need to remind everybody that this is the last session. I had two additional sessions scheduled for June 30th and July 7th, just in case of. Okay, because I didn't know what the full extent and I wasn't really used to, uh, I, I was still, and I still am getting used to all these different um, things on Zoom. So, um, but we, we need to announce that because there are some people who signed up for a June 30th session, but we really don't have anything scheduled. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, as of now, and, and the production team and the uh, servant speakers uh, can come up with what they would like to, or if there is content or learning that we'd like to present on the 30th, John. Um, but as of, as of now, virtually all of the, uh, virtually all the sessions or the um, workshop modules have been pre presented. Right. And they're all recorded and I have the recordings on my equipment here. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thanks to Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, I'm going to start putting some stuff up here because we're f five minutes of and see if I can do this without um, Can everyone see that? Yeah, don't forget to share, don't forget to turn on share your audio. Well, share computer sound is checked. Okay, very good. So when I start his, uh, when I start Steve's video, we should be okay, right? Yes. Okay, now, where is my live on Facebook?
Another thing we need to discuss, Rex, is uh, normally we do this in May, and then we do it again in September, correct? That's correct. Are we going to, you know, um, take some of the stuff we've created and just create new presentations? Or, because I don't know, uh, come September, with the way it's spreading in Texas, if we're going to be able to assemble enough people together and keep social distancing. Yes. Um, um, I, I'd, I'd like to uh, talk through that with the uh, uh, with the servant team. Um, we're, we're going to keep people safe. So oh, if, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, if we, so if we want to, uh, if we want to bring this to people, um, with another, maybe a fresh round of CTW online, uh, or if, uh, um, or, or if, if, if we can, if we can do this live, I know that we're going to collaborate with the administration team and Steve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. My first, my, my first preference, if we can maintain a safety, is uh, uh, to do it at the church. But uh, if we, we can we've maintain got, we've safety, got challenges, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Jeff, are you monitoring Facebook? I am. Um, I never know how to get to it. Um, I've got Facebook on my iPad. Yeah, I'll monitor the questions if anything comes in. Well, um, yeah, I'll monitor here too, but I, I need to get to it. Yeah, as long as you're following it, as long as you're following Career DFW, it should pop up saying Career DFW is now live. And I just click on that and it just opens it up. I got it. Okay. I got it. Five people online already on Facebook. All right. Well, it is 3 o'clock p.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. And so this is the Career Transition Workshop. My name is John Luce, and I am uh, humbled to be your, your host and your kind of master of ceremonies. Um, I would like to, uh, I would like to welcome you all. This, uh, I will repeat this several times. Uh, originally, we scheduled sessions through uh, July 7th, uh, which is the first, I think it's the first Tuesday in July. But anyway, um, Technically, this is the last presentation of what we normally do in our live career transition workshop, uh, which is the all day function. We, when we're holding it in person, it is um, an all day event where we can interact in person, which is so much more powerful, but at least we have the blessing of, uh, of this electronic virtual platform where we can uh, get together and share information uh, and interact to some degree with each other. So um, I, my, uh, my co-hosts here are going to, uh, are going to uh, uh, help prompt me to make sure that um, I repeat that so that people who come in late uh, will be able to understand that. If we do have a session again on the 30th, we will post it through our Yahoo group, the Frisco Connect Yahoo group, as well as uh, Jeff Morris's Career DFW and CareerUSA.org, so that um, everybody can be aware of it. And I'm trying to do, I'm trying to multitask, which is a crazy thing to do. But anyway, for all of you on the call, uh, I do want to take a moment to have you note that we are recording this event 
It is currently live on Facebook on the Career DFW uh, page on Facebook. And it, if you miss it or you speak to somebody and want to recommend uh, this to somebody to look at in the future, it will be on Career DFW's Facebook page. And it will also be posted on YouTube under the Career USA channel. Both of those sites are uh, Jeff Morris's sites. One is specifically focused on our area here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, but the other is geared towards people in other parts of the country, hopefully to plant seeds and have other uh, great organizations. Um, established to help people seeking employment in their different areas of the country. But on both of those platforms, this recorded session will be uh, posted for others to view live in the future. So we, we want everybody to understand that by participating in this event, uh, we want you to be aware if you post a comment in the chat box, either here on Zoom or in the comments section on Facebook, or you have your microphone or camera on, you're implicitly giving consent for your comments, name and picture to appear uh, on those platforms. We don't want anybody, we want to be transparent and don't want anybody to be surprised. Um, as we go along with this presentation, if you're watching us on Zoom and you have a question that our career panel will be uh, addressing later in the session, please use the chat box to enter the question and begin with a question mark. So we know there's a question mark you're submitting, uh, anticipating a response. And then after Rex's presentation, uh, the panel will uh, try to address all the questions that are submitted. If you're watching on Facebook, please enter your, your question in the comments section on Facebook. Uh, again, try and start it with a question mark. Uh, we will be monitoring the Facebook page for additional questions for people who are watching us on that platform. So a quick look at today's agenda. We do have a message of encouragement because we know how stressful these times are for everybody, especially those looking for employment. We will have our feature presentation given by um, one of the founders of this workshop, which is Rex Sowett. And after his presentation, we will then migrate on to the Q&A panel. And then uh, this says next week's presentation. Well, right now there is no uh, announcement for that. I forgot to delete it off the slide. So you can, you can hold me accountable for that. So our message of encouragement is from Steve Fisher, who is the lead pastor of Care Ministries at Stonebriar Community Church in Frisco, Texas. Steve is our sponsoring pastor for the Frisco Connect uh, networking group and for this career transition workshop and has been uh, an anchor for us, uh, an encourager, um, and one who has uh, seen this as a robust ministry in trying to meet the needs of the community, especially in these volatile times. So Steve, Steve serves on a team that provides hope to those who are broken, discouraged, and hurting. Steve is a physio has a master's in physiology. He's a licensed professional counselor, and he also has a degree from Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, he's a wonderful man with a great loving heart, and um, you'll hear his message in just a moment. Then we will have a message from our featured speaker, who is Rex Sowett. Uh, Rex is... Um, going to talk about resume optimization, how COVID-19 is changing the way recruiters look at resumes, and, and uh, uh, how to optimize the resume for beating the applicant tracking system, impressing the recruiter, and winning the hiring manager. Uh, so uh, Rex has got um, years of experience as a uh, high level, director level, uh, manager of HR and recruiting uh, in the corporate world, and um, just um, a, a, a plethora of information and insights and experience that can be helpful to everyone at some point uh, in uh, customizing their resume and dealing with getting their resume out there. 
because we all know that the resume has one objective, and that is to get you the interview. Okay, so our panel um, is five people. Uh, Locke Alderson, who has presented on this workshop earlier. Uh, Rex, who will be presenting today and has presented another earlier segment, which you can watch on YouTube or Facebook. Lori Davis, who has been with the team a long time as well and is a recruiter with about 20 years of experience and as a, a, a foundational partner in this ministry. Foster Williams, oft, sometimes he has been recently dubbed the job father. Uh, Foster will not be with us today, but I didn't delete his picture uh, because I wanted to give him recognition. And then Jeff Morris, who is the founder of careerdfw.org and careerusa.org, uh, who also um, leads a networking group that meets in the Plano, Texas area and has uh, uh, been a stalwart support of people looking for employment. Uh, although he himself is not a recruiter, he has done so much in this community to help people connect and, and find the right connections to get to gain employment. Um, so again, we'll get to the message of encouragement, then our presentation, our Q&A with our expert panel. And as far as next week's presentation, let me reiterate that there is no presentation currently scheduled for June 30th. Technically, this will be our sixth and last increment for the Career Transition Workshop, which is normally when we hold it in person, done in a whole day session instead of weekly uh, segments. So, yeah, here I we apologize. Go. I apologize. I didn't tell you. Well, my name is Jeff, and I'm the Care Ministries Pastor of Stonebriar Community Church in Frisco, Texas. And I'm humbled and privileged to have been asked to say a few words uh, today before uh, the workshop begins. Um, preferably, those are words of encouragement, uh, perhaps of insight. And I just hope they, they bless you and inform you and help you. And what we're going to do today, I think, is uh, talk about time. Um, I'm going to look at time in, in three different areas, um, the past, the future, and the present. And each of these time periods have what I would call a, a, a blessing side and a shadow side. And so let's begin to look and, um, at each of, those, uh, each of these time frames and, and kind of pull apart what I'm, what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at the past. Um, there is a blessing when your thoughts and your emotions um, wander back to things that have already occurred. Um, you can uh, derive uh, some lessons learned, some wisdom when you look back and you begin to kind of assess what you did, what you didn't do, and hopefully that um, you improve and, and you learn something from it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Green Bay Packers. And um, I remember as a kid growing up, there was a, a film clip on our local TV station of, of uh, Vince Lombardi and Bart Starr. Um, and Vince were, and Bart were going over game film. And, and I thought it to be really instructive. You, you could see the coach uh, talk to the quarterback and say, hey, you, you did good here, or you, know, you, you missed the call on this one. But it was done in such a way uh, that the quarterback learned. And, and, and I think um, that's not a bad habit to get into is to kind of look back and have this honest reflection of, okay, I did this well, I didn't do this that well. And so it gives that opportunity for some, uh, some learning um, and some discovery. Um, the shadow side, the shadow side of living in the past is um, because you really can't do anything about it, can you? And, and there's this um, theory of anger and anger grows in the space between uh, what I desire, what I expect and what reality is. And so anger is what we call a resolving emotion. It tries to bring up reality uh, to what I expect. And unfortunately it doesn't work that way. We, we have to take our expectations, connect them with reality, and then collectively bring them up. But if we spend too much time in the past, if we spend too much time 
um, trying to uh, reconcile things that we can't. Uh, sometimes it's like running in quicksand, right? Um, the harder you worry, uh, the harder you think about what's gone in the past, you, you just sink deeper. And so you get stuck. And so if we spend time in the past, it's opportunistic to be um, uh, an instructive time, a learning time, a growing time. But if we spend all our time back in the past, we are stuck in the past. And, and, and there's generally um, that anger that is associated with that because you can't do anything about it, but we keep trying to. And that takes away from the moment. It takes away from the present. So let's, let's look at the second uh, unit of time. Uh, that unit of time uh, we'll call the future. And there is a tremendous amount of blessing um, to be able to spend time looking in the future. Um, that's where hope lies. Um, that's where um, perhaps new motivation, okay, I want to get to here. That means I, I will take extra classes, I will go to extra workshops, I'll talk to extra people. But there's a sense of hope of this is where I'm going, this is where I can be. And many times that, that provides that hope and motivation to grow, uh, to push yourself forward a little bit. Um, it's, a, it, it, it's a blessing to be able to do that. Um, and, and for those who are, are, are Christians, it is really, again, the blessing of our Savior um, that we are not confined to the mistakes or the sins of the past, uh, that our Lord has taken those sins upon us, and we can have a better tomorrow than yesterday or even today. Uh, that's no small feat. Uh, we aren't stuck in Groundhog Day. We can learn and we can grow and we can move forward with hope and motivation uh, to find a way to, um, uh, to, to, to move forward um, and not be stuck. Um, the shadow side of living in the future too much is that's where anxiety grows. Because even though we're hopeful, and even though we're motivated, we don't have any control. And when we spend too much time looking forward, we become anxious. And we become anxious in, in a fashion that is um, fear-based. Generally, we don't often look in the future with an abundance of confidence, sad to say. We, we look with some fear, foreboding, some anxiousness. And so if you are spending a great deal of time looking in the future, what's going to happen, running scenarios out, um, uncertain of, of what it may bring, um, while you have a blessing in terms of identifying some motivating uh, goals to achieve, if you spend too much time back there, uh, most often you just are reduced to a bundle of anxieties and a bundle of fear, and that's a very paralyzing, paralyzing set of emotions. So, so now let's, let's move to the present, the blessing side of the present. That's how we can experience life. It's how we are able to um, uh, feel um, with some degree of immediate gratification of friendships and loved ones and relationships and all of the things that go into our day to day that make life worthwhile, eating a good cheeseburger, um, taking a walk, um, observing a, 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 a beautiful painting, a piece of art, or, or listening to a tremendous piece of music, or maybe talking to a dear friend. All of the things that are present and current that I believe our God gives us so that we may be engaged in this life. So, so living in this present moment has the great blessing of being engaged in life and being able to receive um, the real-time blessings of a um, real and present God. Um, the shadow side, yeah, the, the, there is a shadow side, I think. Because sometimes when we're in the present, we are absent, meaning the time goes by, but we are, we are absent. We, we, we are just not present in day-to-day -day life. And therefore, for lack of a better word, we're, we're wasting that time. That a day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, three months go by, a year goes by. 
and we've not engaged in anything. So the danger is of, of staying focused, of being in the present, is that you may be just so um, present that you're absent. You, you're not thinking about, okay, where am I going? You're not learning from where I've been. And really the opposite occurs of the great blessing that we have been given. For those who are believers in Christ, um, one of the great blessings of, of being present and engaged in your life is this is how we get to experience um, the third person, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. For the great counselor, the great convictor, the great comforter, um, our scriptures say has been indwelt in us. And therefore we have the constant opportunity to listen to, to lean into, um, a God that loves us, that cares about us, um, that never lets us alone. And so, so I pray that that gives you great comfort. So each day brings us the opportunity to spend time in, in these three areas. When we're in the past, um, the question really is, and we'll spend time uh, through a day in, in various pieces, uh, parts of that time. And, and again, each have their blessings and each have their shadow side. And so we're asking you to be aware of that. Where, where are you? Where do you spend most of your time? And, and I think a distribution of all three of those is, is really uh, important. So if you're spending time in the past, um, that has the opportunity to be full of worry and anger and trying to change things that simply cannot change. That's the shadow side. The blessing side is it's an opportunity to grow and learn um, where you gain um, wisdom from. Most of life is not a cognitive ascent. It's iterative. It's trial and error. We learn. And so if you're not attending to that, I think you lose some some opportunities for some wonderful life lessons, professional lessons. Uh, the second place we talked about is, is the future. The shadow side of the future is that you can become so overwhelmed with anxiety and uncertainty and fear becomes the, the only place that you draw any of your thoughts from or your energy from. And, and that fear and that anxiety just locks you up. But the blessing side of looking in the future, that's where hope comes in, that we can have a better tomorrow than yesterday. That's where um, uh, the opportunity to become motivated uh, to, to push yourself, to grow, to use the gifting that God has given you. And so, again, the downside, the shadow side is fear and anger. The upside is hope and motivation. And finally, the present, what we call today, today. Uh, the shadow side is that you could be absent, that, that you're not attentive to it, and you're wasting the moments that God has given us, and they're precious moments. The blessing of staying in today is to be present, present with your Holy Spirit, to seek the counsel, to hear the conviction, to provide the comfort. And so you're engaged. Um, and, and that's my deep hope uh, after listening to these few words that you do take a little time to take an inventory. Where am I spending the majority of my time? And if I'm spending it there, am I looking at the shadow side of it or am I giving the opportunity for a blessing to occur? And so I often say this, that life is hard, um, not an original statement. But it's always harder when you go through it alone. And that's what I remind you. That if you have a faith, uh, our scripture says a cord of three is the strongest. That you've got the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You have yourself. And one of the wonderful things I love about these networking opportunities, about what you are going to hear, what you're going to listen through, is that you're not alone. We have other people. So that quarter three is your own capacities, your own gifting, the power of the sovereign God 
and one another. And it's that core that is the strongest, no matter what you're going through. I believe um, that if you hold with that, that core of three, you're going to be fine. And the good people of this workshop, um, they are indeed good people and are here to help you, to serve you. Um, and I pray that you take advantage of that. So again, a, a great privilege to just take a few moments and, and perhaps give you that different perspective of time in the three areas of time, our past, our future, and our present. And I pray that you are bringing um, the right focus, the right distribution of time, uh, so that uh, your blessings are abundant, and then you're able to share them with others. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? So again, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to take a few minutes. I know you're gonna have an incredible experience. And again, if there's anything we can do at Stonebrook Community Church, let us know. So we'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, well, um, I hope that was helpful to somebody on the call. And before I hand it over to Rex, I just want to acknowledge uh, the participants and the people who make this workshop happen. Uh, uh, Jeff Morris, uh, who's helped with the production of this all along. Um, Foster Williams, who I see is with us for a short time, but I know he's going to have to leave. I'll be here the whole time. Huh? I'll be here the whole time. I, I forgot to tell you that I have Wi-Fi over here. Oh, okay. Well, you just made a liar out of me. Okay. The God, my the job father is going to be with us. Oh, um, Lori, Lori Davis, who's not with us today, but has done uh, previous presentations in this workshop. Gail Bridgman, who is a regular contributor and presenter at our workshops, uh, is on an assignment uh, during this period of time where she hasn't been able uh, to share, but she, I know she's praying for us. And uh, she is a regular contributor to our workshop. Locke Alderson, um, uh, who is a, another uh, foundational uh, personality who helps us along and is just a vibrant helper with people who uh, help them in answering their questions and, and giving them instruction and guidance and coaching. Gail Houston, who is another founder of this workshop and uh, on the original team with Rex, uh, Gail is has given uh, earlier presentations. I think she was week number two, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Gail is not with us to be on the panel today. But uh, she um, she is just a, a marvelous foundational uh, rock of information and guidance for those wanting to understand how compute how recruiters work. And, and how to interface and build relationships with recruiters. And then our presenter today and another founder of this team, which is Rex Sowett. But I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Steve Fisher, who you just heard from in our moment of encouragement. Um, and then he has some support who do a lot of the back work uh, to make things happen in our sponsorship with Stonebriar. And that's uh, Jean Allen, who's in the middle picture here. Then I still didn't get those names transposed like they were supposed to be. But the, the gal in the middle is actually Jean Allen, and the gal on the right is Karen Hawkins, who are both uh, who is a pastoral leader at Stonebriar Community Church, and helps us put all these uh, events together when we're doing them in person, and does a lot of the tactical work behind the scenes. So I just wanted to acknowledge everybody who spends uh, innumerable time in putting this workshop together. So now we're going to hear from Rex Sowett, and I'm going to uh, end this PowerPoint and turn it over to him uh, for his time of sharing information on resume optimization. So Rex, I've made you a co-host. You should be able to get your PowerPoint up. So I'm gonna give it over to you, sir. Thank you, John. Let me, uh, uh, I, I had some issues with uh, getting my presentation up last time. Let me, let me see if I can do that. Okay. 
a little bit more uh, smoothly this time. Okay, and while you're yeah. doing that, let me reiterate to everybody who's joined the meeting. Uh, we originally had sessions ske scheduled through next Tuesday, June 30th and the following Tuesday, July 7th. But currently, uh, we don't have anything uh, uh, put together right now. Uh, this session technically is the last session. It's session number six in the series of the Career Transition Workshop. And we've covered most of the aspects that we normally do in our live presentations when we gather together at, at Stonebriar Community Church and do our all-day session. I also would like to repeat that if you have a question for our panel, which we will convene in about 35 minutes, you can enter that in chat. Please type a question mark first and then your question so that we can pick those out from all the comments that are put in the chat. And, or you can post your chat if you're watching on Facebook in the comments section on Facebook, we will be monitoring that as well. Did I give you enough time, sir? Yes, uh, can people see the, uh, my first screen for resume optimization? It hasn't come up yet, sir. Oh my gosh, okay, goodness. It's on my, it's, it, it, it's on my screen and I don't know why it's not transferring. Hold on. Share your screen. Be sure and click, go down to the pop-up menu and uh, tell it to share your screen. It's the green. Ah, thank you. With the arrow. Take some, there you go. You're, okay, there you go. Uh, I'm gonna get this to the slide slideshow and from the beginning. Correct. How's that look, everyone? Wonderful. Okay. Uh, I guess we, we usually share this section in a 50, 50 minute presentation and I've got 30 minutes. So I'm gonna start off fast and uh, collect, collect speed along the way uh, so that I can get it to to the schedule that John has given everyone. Um, what, what a lot of people ask themselves and work on with their resume, uh, they've, they've either embellished, re-engineered, re come up with longer versions, shorter ver versions, other formats, and many people just think what, what they ask themselves and maybe torture themselves in, in saying, what is my resume missing? Uh, what's the right combination of content, style, language? Uh, and even though people think that, hey, I'm perfect for this job, many folks don't even get a response from the recruiter. So what, what, uh, what I want to do is to go, go through what I think are go, no go platforms that your resume has to make sure that it competes or shows a competitive content and a design. The, I call them eye contact platforms. There are going to be at least three decision-making steps or applications or, or mechanisms that your resume has to go through. One is the technology, the applicant tracking system, the recruiter, that's the human interaction, and as well as the hiring manager, which is again, the human interaction that we have here. Uh, there was one question, John, that came up uh, in one of our, our sessions earlier. Which applicant tracking system seems to be the most dominant. So let, let, me, let me just answer that question right now. Number one, 2019, 2020, the number one applicant tracking system is Workday. Number two is Oracle's Taleo. Number three, to my understanding, it's iSIMS. Number four would be uh, Success Factors or SAP's Success Factor applicant tracking system. So let me go over and, tr and try to take you behind the curtain on each one of these platforms and, and how your resume can perform and be more competitive. Number one, why do we have applicant tracking systems? 
the applicant tracking system is there because we have so many applicants that have uh, that apply, need to have uh, response and need to have uh, storage for the resume. Um, the applicant tracking system that I remember earliest uh, in my days was in, I, I'd say 1996, there was a company called RecruitSoft uh, that rolled out their applicant tracking system with Hewlett Packard. Uh, RecruitSoft eventually became Taleo. If you want to have exposure and compete, in Fortune 500 companies, then at the very least that in, for uh, research that I've done, 496, 494, pardon me, of the Fortune 500 use applicant tracking systems. So if you apply for Amazon, IBM, Starbucks, um, American Airlines, JC Penney's, uh, all of those, you have to use their applicant tracking system. Uh, the average number that I heard was for number of people who applied is 118 using uh, interviewsuccessformula.com. Uh, I've also heard 250 for Glassdoor. So many, many people will apply for positions on applicant tracking systems. Now, what I want to go over with the team is that because technology is growing and becoming more pervasive, you may have an applicant tracking system that has um, behavioral questions to, to answer, um, questions that ask for uh, maybe uh, uh, traits that you have, strength finder traits, virtues, qualities. And I can tell you right now, the applicant tracking system will get more and more pervasive. I remember when I applied for a position, I answered 161 questions to, to, uh, uh, to finally get my application in. You're not gonna get that for every one of them, but I think that a lot of people on the call uh, are running into applicant tracking systems where they're thinking, gee, th this technology is asking me for a lot of information. And the answer to that is yes, because guess what? Um, candidates for the risk and the loss that you have in a bad candidate or bad hire is so high nowadays that they want to rely on the applicant tracking system to try to weed out or source out the best candidate that's out there. Now, let me see. This, this is not catching or my slide is not uh, catching what I uh, I had earlier. So let me let me describe what uh, what I have here and I'll walk you through this. Okay. How many people have have heard in workshops or sessions, you've got to have your resume with keywords. You've got to have more keywords. You've got to have more keywords. And I have not heard a session that said, how much is enough? How many key words are enough to catch the, uh, to get me through the, the applicant tracking system? Understand this, the machine is not that smart. What it is, is that it, it, it's a word counter and it's specifically a keyword counter. So, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this, uh, uh, this slide that didn't catch everything. Um, I had access to Monsters uh, job, job Board. It's a resume um, job seeker where the recruiter can put in parametric search for resumes. Now you can't have this, uh, or the, the, the candidate or, or the job seeker can't have this. It costs a lot of money to have. But what I'm going to talk about is Monsters keyword search uh, tracking tool. Uh, what I put in, and, and again, I'm filling in this blank 
what I had in my uh, parametric search was only four things. My keywords that I told Monster to look for were sales. I wanted to take a look at individuals that were 30 miles within Flower Mound. Um, I wanted to take a look at resumes that also were submitted in in the last 90 days. So geography, keywords, and length of time is what I submitted into Monster. Now, let me show you what I came up with or what, uh, what Monster showed me as the number one resume when I put in that parametric search. I've, I've taken off the candidate name, contact information, and anything like that. All I'm looking for or showing you right now is what that resume looked like. Now, what was I looking for? What was my keyword? My keyword was what? Sales. Yeah. And on this, on, on, on what you're seeing in front of you, what I wanted you to see is how many times sales is used in this person's resume, okay? This is their first page, and you're seeing sales, 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 sales throughout this individual's resume. I'm, t I'm oh, um, again, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, this was, this was out of sequence. This as a reminder, all I'm looking for is sales, flower mound, 30 mile rate radius in 90 days. This is, this is the, um, this is the first page you're seeing of the resume. This is the second page of the resume. And what I wanted to impress upon the team, look how many times that word is used for sales. Is it, Rex, is it a secret for what sort of keyword that the recruiter is looking for? The answer to that is no. We're not that smart. If we're looking for a quality analyst, what's our key word? Quality. Analyst. Analyst. If it's project manager, what's the key word? Project manager. If it's accountant, what's the key word? Accountant. Now, we can go with several iterations. For, as, for example, for accountant, we might show cost accountant. We might show financial variance. We, we, we might show report writing, budgeting, forecasting. But, uh, 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 but the, the word accountant or human resources or operations or supply chain or buyer, those are the keywords that we specifically look for. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to show you this, uh, uh, this metric. This comes from Monster. The candidate resume that you just saw was, uh, had 2,998 total words on that resume. The keyword that I had was only sales. There were 39 keyword hits on that resume. That resume had a keyword percentage hit of 1.3 keywords. This was the number one resume that, that, that came up. Do I call this candidate? Yeah, I call all this candidate. And if people can't manage 1.3 keyword percentage of their, uh, of their resume, then at that point, that applicant tracking system uh, takes you out of, of, of the running. Um, I, I now want to go over what the recruiter is looking for. Now, keep in, keep in mind that on the average, well, let, let, me, uh, let me see if I could uh, surprise Foster. The, the highest number of candidates that I had was for one position was 517. Uh, applied for a site acquisition manager in telecommunications. Uh, it was in telecommunications, okay? Had the position up for, for a long time. Guys, do I look at 517 resumes? 
No, I don't, I don't have the time to take a look at. Then Rex, what as a recruiter, if, if you don't have the time to take a look at all those resumes, what do you specifically look for on the resume? And, uh, and every, I think everyone has heard, how long does it take for uh, a recruiter to take a look at a resume? Six seconds, I believe that, I truly believe. For the people on this call that are recruiters, they could probably name that tune in three or four seconds. We, we do a lot of shortcuts because we got a lot of candidates. I'm showing this analysis from ladders. People have probably seen this before, but for those individuals that have not seen this, I wanted to show this to you. What ladders did was they assembled 30 recruiters and put what they call a gaze trace analysis. It was instrumentation that tracked the recruiters eye movements for where they looked on the resume. Where you look on the resume, that's where the critical thinking happens. So specifically, what were the, what were the recruiters looking for? Okay. Um, I show this on a big screen. So I hope this translates. When you take a look at this, 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 might, take a, this might take a look like um, the weather channel for the Dallas Metroplex, you see what are hot spots. Anytime that you see a hot spot in yellow and then specifically in orange, you are seeing a gaze uh, of, uh, of length of time for that recruiter. What I want to impress on the team, guys, do we even take a look at the name or contact? No, we don't. On page one, what we are looking for is top half of that resume to see whether or not the keywords that we have been assigned by the hiring manager are located there. What, what is generally in the top fourth of the resume? You, you can have your objective statement, you can have your achievements, but I, 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 I want to impress upon the team where on the resume, specifically page one, is the recruiter taking a look at? It's the, it's the left side, not generally the right side, but the left side of the resume. What are we looking for on the left side of the resume? Usually job title. That's what we're looking for. On the second page, and this is a two-page resume, guys. What the recruiter then looks at, page two, is that they take they they then take a look and 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 by the way the the name of this person on here was not my selection it was uh, uh it was the ladder's recommendation so I I don't want people to think that I'm uh I I'm I'm really cavalier with uh, with uh, confidentiality the gaze of the recruiter still stays where on the resume left to center left to center. Rex, why is that? Because, because, and uh, I have to attribute this to uh, uh, to Dirk Spencer, uh, a, a major thought leader and a recruiter within the Dallas Metroplex. He states, and this is true, one of the laziest muscles that we have is the eye. And what the eye wants to do is what? Pull left or right. We want to pull left. Why is that? Because that's where the job title is and probably where we think that uh, uh, the best qualifications are. Now at the bottom of the second page, you see a very, very large uh, yellow spot or gay spot. What is in that, what is usually in that area? Your education. So my, my recommendation is when you, uh, if, if, if you have significant uh, experience, um, and I get this question a lot, Rex, should I lead off with education or should I, uh, should I allow my experience to do the talking? Let your experience do the talking, 
put your ed education down at the bottom of your resume. And it could be at the bottom of page two, it could be at the bottom of page three. If you can get away, uh, away with it, get it to the bottom of page four. Why? Force the, re the recruiter to look through your entire resume. Because guess what? After, uh, after the, uh, uh, the education, I generally don't continue my gaze, okay? Um, let me go to the next, uh, the next page. This gives you a little bit more of analysis. There are one, two, three, four, five, six power spots on your resume. Um, so if, uh, if you have a resume, and I'm gonna give you a tip right now, for resumes that have what I call rolling paragraph descriptions, where the lines of your resume keep on going from one line to the next line to the next line, get out of that format. Go to bullets. Why? Your bullets will force me to get to the, the, the half of the resume, which is the left side. Those are your power spots, okay? Um, I wanted, I, 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 I wanted to show how much time even the hiring manager takes. Everyone thinks, okay, six seconds for, for, uh, for recruiters. I get that. 68% of the hiring managers will spend two minutes or less. 17% of the managers only spend 30 seconds on it. So I'm the recruiter, I send the top eight to the manager, maybe the top 12 candidates that I see, that hiring manager will take 17, about 20% of them will only take 30 seconds to take a look at what, uh, uh, at what they believe is, is, uh, is the best candidate to interview. What are the hiring managers then looking for? What are the hiring managers looking for? I'll tell you what they're not looking for. They are not looking for canned resumes. Unless you customize your resume to show a messaging solution to that hiring manager that aligns specifically with a, uh, a solution to their problems, your resume is not going to be competitive. Um, Rex, if if words are if words are really really important on your resume, and they are, are there worse words to put on your resume? I love this analysis that Career Builder uh, gave in two thousand uh, in two thousand and fourteen. They came up with the percentages of words of worse words to have on your resume. I encourage the team. If you have these words on your resume, your, uh, your resume is not going to be as impactful as, uh, as, as you believe. So uh, uh, cleanse, you know, cleanse yourself certainly of, of, of the, at least the top five, at least the top five. Um, uh, I call these words uh, resume cellulite. Uh, because the, they they are just fattening and they're fluff on you, Rex. Do you have words on my resume that are more impactful? The answer to that is yes. I like what Career Builder said, and this this again uh, is Career Builder uh, analysis. Number uh, number one and two, I understood. Achieved, improved. If you can if you can put these words on your resume, do so. What what I was really surprised on, team, on, on these key words was the term trained or mentored. 47% favorable, uh, favorable uh, uh, word uh, when, when people saw, okay? Uh, another surprise that I saw, the term volunteered. So if you're not working right now and you have uh, uh, you, you've donated your time, your service, and volunteered. Using that term, 
is a really, really good word. There is a best word on, my, on, on your resume that over the last four months is now going to be a key attractive word on your resume. And guess what that word is? Remote. If, if anyone on the call has performed their duties, responsibilities, jobs, and achieved in terms of remote, uh, put that on. Um, more and more as people, as people on this call probably know, more and more uh, companies are looking for that individual that can perform at home, okay? So start feet, uh, another word that one can use is, uh, is um, independent performance, uh, initiative. All of those things can be words that can be used or, or translated for uh, people working remotely. Um, let me see. Okay, before I leave this slide, so Rex, the, diff the difference between an applicant tracking system are key words. What are the things that, uh, that the recruiter and the hiring managers are looking at? They're looking at context and scale. I want you to, to put things in your resume that can give context and scale on, on, on each of your duties and responsibilities. What do you mean by that, Rex? I want you to use the term increased, decreased, raised, lowered. Um, example, accountant. Uh, I used, I'm sorry, in my data reporting, I decrease the cost of this department by 15%. Um, in sales, I overachieved my quota by 14% to a, uh, to a quota achievement of $5.4 million. Okay. Virtually every line can show that quantification of achievement that will give scale and that will give content to each of, uh, of, of your uh, duties and responsibilities. If you don't have that, I wanna warn the people on this call, you're then just showing a job description for a resume. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to turn over this, uh, this presentation back to John in about uh, five to seven minutes. Okay, John? Rex, does timing have anything to do with it? You, you, you can go uh, up to 10. Okay, thank you so much. Rex, does timing have anything to do with it? The answer to that is absolutely positively yes. If you apply on Monday, your hiring chances, and I've given sources here, your, your chances for hiring are 46% better when they, take a, when they took a look at 4,000 uh, applicants. So, Rex, what are you saying here in terms of, 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 of applying? The behavior of the recruiter is such that I'm on Thursday and Friday tending to show resumes, review resumes with my, uh, with my management, or even generating an offer letter. And I wanna do that generally later in the week so that people have a weekend to think about it. I like what Mark, what uh, the analysis that Mark Babbitt of U-Turn had in, in uh, submitting in their resume. And, and he, he guys breaks it down to Tuesday morning to Thursday before noon that local time. Why is that? Usually, again, the behavior of the interview will dictate when I take a look at resumes. Most of the resumes that I want to take a look at are uh, uh, to the middle of the week so that I can get it in front of my manager uh, by Friday. Okay. Um, Leslie Stevens from DICE even, even broke it down even further, saying that your interview it has a five times higher chance if you submit the application before 10 a.m. 
Rex, explain that one to me. When I get into the office, do I generally take a look at, at, uh, at uh, uh, candidates early in the day or later in the day? Early in the day. Because I want to take a look at candidate flow that came in the night before and then start my interviewing. Uh, if I need to schedule interviews, I'll schedule those interviews in the afternoon sometime. Now that 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 could be that could be on a uh, uh, on a uh, afternoon Monday Tuesday Wednesday usually are uh, are the times that I I schedule as a recruiter uh, the interview uh, behaviorally I try to get my interview for the hiring managers before the close of this week why is that Rex because hiring managers and John Luce was a hiring manager. Locke was a hiring manager. Foster Williams was a hiring manager. Jeff was a hiring manager. Why do I try to schedule interviews that way? Because you guys force me, force my behavior to get those interviews scheduled so that the weekend, the, uh, the, the, the weekend doesn't come. Hiring managers virtually because of the weekend don't like to interview on, on Mondays. They're trying to catch up, okay? So I thought uh, I, I, I thought that this uh, was was smart data. I want to focus on uh, Rex. Should I submit my resume, or how fast should I submit my resume? So speed uh, submit, uh, speed of submittal, not timing of uh, of of submittal. Speed of submittal. I like what Smart Recruiters Analysis said. Sixty four percent of the people that applied within the first 96 hours got a boost over their competition. They, they broke it down even more. 60% of the candidates applied within the first week. Now, this is, this is where guys, LinkedIn does a, a really, really nice job. LinkedIn will show you how many candidates have applied. Okay, when uh, I've been a job seeker, I've been laid off four times. So one of the, one of the things that uh, one of the things that I do is, and I'll, I'll give you a tip. I don't wait four days. I'm coming in and I'm coming in after you in four hours. I'm submitting in with speed. R Rex, you're submitting in your resume that's customized within four hours. The answer to that is yes. Why is that? Uh, because I want to hit hard, I want to hit fast, and I want to hit with impact. I want to force that recruiter to take a look at a great resume that I have. Um, and and this, is, this is where your agility really, really helps in trying to get, uh, uh, trying to get your resume in. Um, I'm going to go over some uh, quick fixes, low-hanging fruit that you can you can take a look at in your first 48 hour, uh, you know, uh, 24 hours. Okay. What what I call as the job title marquee statement or the job title that you're looking for. Put that below the name of your resume. Why is that? It will catch it'll catch the eye of the recruiter as well as the applicant tracking system, as well as the hiring manager. And it will show that you've now customized your, 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 your resume. Keep, keep in mind something that I've talked about, guys. The individual's eye behavior tracks from left to right, or I'm sorry, left to middle of the page, not left to right edge of the middle of the page. We, take, we generally stop looking at that keyword from left to middle of the page. That's where you load in your, 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 your keywords. I talked about block paragraph text. Um, go with bullet points, bullet points, bullet points, bullet points. Now I get the question a lot, Rex, how many bullet points do you want to see for the last position that I have that I think is competitive for the position? My recommendation is seven, no less than five, but I, I prefer 
seven to eight bullet points. Rex, that's a lot of bullet points in describing my job. Yeah, unpack it for me, guys. I'm just a res I'm just a recruiter. I ain't that smart. Okay. Now, in terms of fonts, uh, Arial, Calibra uh, are the best fonts. I'm using Calibra right now. Uh, Times New Roman is is okay, but that's uh, uh, that has some serifs uh, with it. My re my recommendations: Arial and um, Arial and uh, Celebra uh, are, are 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 what I would look look at. Some tactical uh, optimization that you can do in the next uh, uh, three days, uh, personally, and you'll get some controversy. I, I like a achievement section uh, for uh, uh, for the for the first top. I'm gonna I'm gonna modify I'm gonna modify this advice for the first top of your first page. An achievement section of the best uh, achievements results that you have related to each position. If, if your position is a quality engineer, I don't, need, I don't need to see anything that you've done in human resources or operations, not, not to dismiss that. Um, it's, it's the quality achieve. If I'm looking for a quality engineer, I'm looking for quality stuff that the person, uh, that the person ha has. Last job, start thinking about what made you the best in your department and the best in your company. And I want to see that on your resume. My recommendation is when you update uh, your resume, especially with the big boards, do it twice a week. Rex, when would you do, if, if you had to do this twice a week, when would you do it? I would do it on uh, late, Sunday evening or early Monday morning. Why is that? Because your resume pops to the top of the of the pack. Um, some people say, "Hey, do it at least once once a month." I, I I think that I don't think that you're competitive if 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 you do that. Rex, that's a lot of work. Yeah, I know it's a lot of work, but you're going to be that much more uh, competitive. Replace on your resume anytime that you use the term responsible for take it out use better verbs you can do that okay strategic uh, uh and i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this back over to, to john in about four minutes um strategic uh improvements do so in the next couple of weeks or ongoing in each of your jobs that are meaningful and what rex what do you mean by meaningful competitive for the job that you're looking for. List 10 duties that you, uh, uh, that you did and use those five to eight duties on your resume with context and scale. So how did you improve? How much did you improve? What was the amount that you improved or decreased or, or rose uh, on that resume? Okay. Uh, if, if you guys, if you have any questions, here's my contact. Him. I, I'm giving you my personal cell phone. Give me a call. Say that Rex. What do you What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Um, I'll, listen, uh, you know, I'm. I, I want to serve you. I want to help you. Uh, email me is is okay, but my preference is that you give me a phone call. Okay. Uh, it's uh, five oh. It's five oh six. John, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, Rex. It's four oh six here. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in, guys. I'm Rex, in. Uh, I'm in Rex Charlotte, is on, North Rex Carolina. Is on, you know, Rex used to live in the DFW area, but he, uh, for various reasons, he's relocated to the East Coast, and he still spends a, a great amount of time supporting this workshop in the DFW area. But um, so now, what um, what we're going to do? is we're going to go ahead and um, oh, I can't believe I did that. OK. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to our panel. And 
what I'd like to do is let me uh, let me get this back up here, and we'll uh, have some some context. There we go. So, um, let me go back to our Zoom meeting here. Well, you got to know your way around or else things really get get tied up. Yeah. John, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot of real estate to cover. There, we should be able to see that now. So um, we've got Locke, you're with us, aren't you, sir? I'm here. Thank you, sir. Lori? I think you said Lori wasn't going to make it today. No, I said Foster wasn't going to make it today, but he, Foster, has changed his schedule and joined us. I think Lori? Hey, guys. I think we're the way around, John. Okay. Well, I guess Lori um, has had some commitments. Uh, she is currently uh, working very diligently in her position. So, I'll cover uh, for Lori. <laughs> you'll cover for Lori? I'll cover for Lori. Okay. All right. So if you're on the Zoom meeting, you may want to go to, uh, you may want to go to speaker view. And I've got some questions that have come up. If you'll just give me a section, uh, a, 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 a second. Gee, I wish I could talk. Um, we do have some questions that have come up. And I'm going to go to those right now. So uh, Fernando had a question. Um, asking do the 90 days in the search criteria count towards when the resume was first uploaded or when it was last updated um uh rex do you want to do you want to take a shot at that yeah uh, uh the reason why i like fernando's question uh is that it, it it talks about timing thanks for asking that question fernando uh for for monster for career builder uh it's the last time that you refresh now with some with some applicant tracking systems and job boards it will show when you originally put or submitted in your resume fernando uh but for the better job boards it will show your refresh date okay okay so that's why uh, you yeah. want to update it every so often or uh, 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 yeah, if uh, guys, I you don't, you don't want to get stuck in the middle or the bottom of the pile. You 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 want it you want it as high up on 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 the pile as you can. And I think Jeff had a uh, an answer as well. Well, I just wanted to sort of share a story. This comes from my North Dallas uh, focus group on Friday mornings. We had a candidate for a, a gentleman once, and he said. Every morning, Monday through Friday, at 6 o'clock or 6.30, he would go and update something, add a period, take off a period, whatever. And one day, he got a phone call from some guy in New York City going, why is it every day when I come in at 8 o'clock or 8.30 and I run my report, you are at the top of the list? What, what are you doing to make that happen every day? Now, he didn't have a job for the guy, but it was just a matter of he was making it to the top of the list by updating himself every morning at, uh, you know, at eight, you know, so that when they people came in at you know, on Eastern time zone, you know, it would be updated. So uh, it does work. Some of the job boards will allow you to just refresh. There's a button to click refresh it. Others of them, as Jeff mentioned, you can go in and add a period or delete a period is enough to refresh the resume. It doesn't take much to ref refresh the resume on the job boards. I often advise people just go in at the end of your first sentence 
and delete the period, put it back in, and it reads it as an updated document, and there you go. Foster, you got any input on that? I've got none at all. Um, uh, guys, does that work, Rex? Does that work lock as well for LinkedIn? Uh, Again, LinkedIn doesn't yeah, have well, a refresh. Uh, Locks the better uh, expert with uh, LinkedIn. D LinkedIn doesn't have a refresh button, but if you go in and make the change to it and save it, it will refresh it. Oh yeah, it changes that algorithm. Okay. And that okay. is any change to your LinkedIn profile or specifically to your work history or whatever. No, any change that you make will change. Anything. Okay, thank you. Well, Heidi had a question about. Uh, a statement that is a question. Uh, my most recent job descriptions are internships, but most of my career experience is from past years. So earlier, be, before her internships, how can I get a re the recruiter to look past the internships? Locke, you want to take a shot at that? Well, let me take an initial shot. There are two approaches that I can suggest. We've mentioned that the headline has to match the job title that you're applying for. That's the first thing. And under your summary statement or your whatever statement that you have at the top about your background, it's usually about four to eight lines. About you. It's compressing your experience down to that amount of space. So it's a, it's a resume of your resume. Underneath that, you want to add a couple of accomplishment statements that reflect to that particular job title. What in your history reflects to that job title and supports the job title to show your experience there. That's one quick, easy solution. The other one is to go to a slightly different format of a resume. That's called a hybrid resume, which lists your areas of accomplishment in blocks. Like it might be recruiting for me, or it might be employee relations, or compensation and benefits, or training and development. With, by having them in blocks and paragraphs, I can rotate those around on the resume, just shift them around, cut and pay, you know, copy and paste those around. At the bottom of your resume, you also want to have your, your actual chronological or shorter chronological history of your resume because recruiters like a pure functional resume, dislike pure functional resumes because they tell what you did and where you, but they, they fail to tell where you did it and when you did it, which is what you're trying to accomplish. If we're taking your earlier experience, you can move that block of information by a functional area to the top of your resume below your summary. So those are two possible solutions. Uh, uh, can I can I layer on uh, uh, on, on what uh, uh, Locke said, John? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. guys, I, I I want you to expand your thinking on this. The the there is something called what I call a uh, the skills equity. What are we looking for? It's now past experience, and it's now to skills. And I don't care how you got it. If you got it through an internship, if you got it through temporary, if you got it through volunteer, if you got it through certification, okay, all of that adds to production value. So if 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 you got it through, it, it, I, I've seen I've seen such challenging internships over the last four years. It's amazing. What I want you to do is is to is to really hone in on unpacking some of the most challenging projects that you had and, and showing it on the resume. One thing, Foster, that I see uh, a lot of internships not wanting to do is go past one page. Mm -hmm. if, 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 the, if you think that you have competitive information that goes a page and a half, guess what, guys? I will look at that second page. I'll go, I'll go, uh, my resume goes to three and a half pages. I'll let people know. And depending on what the position is, I will go to a fourth page. Well, I, th I agree with what Rex has said. No, I think contrary to what a lot of people think. Unpacking the skills though, you can have the internship, but you need to have a, if you're gonna do that, you need to have a skills category, have a separate section for skills and pull it out separately. They could be repeated under your experience for the internship. But by having it as a separate section, it stands out on the resume so people can see it. Yeah. I think for every bullet point that you have on your resume, you need to ask yourself, so what? 
And if you don't, if you can't come up with a good reason of so what, don't tell us what you did. You need to tell us what your successes are in each one of those categories. And if you don't have successes to go with it, you know, I, I'm not looking to read a job description. Right. And that's why Rex says to quantify it with numbers and, and quantities and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, good response. Uh, Jaidi asks, how do you manage your customized resume, your LinkedIn and other job boards when applying for different positions so that you're always relevant no matter who's looking at them? Now that's an interesting question uh, because it, it's a complexity. If you're applying for multiple positions, you're customizing your resume to that job description. Um, how, how, how do you sync that with your information that's out on different job boards and LinkedIn and whatnot? Who wants to tackle that one? Let me take an initial shot at that, JD. I think the first thing that you need to do on your LinkedIn profile is not limit your headline, which is the area underneath your name. You have 120 characters to play with there, so list different job titles that are there that you're interested in. That's the first thing. That, because your LinkedIn profile is kind of cast in concrete. You can't customize it every time you apply for a job. So the way that you do that is to, is to set that down. If you don't have job preferences established already, there's a setting over in your settings category, there is a job preferences section where you can go in initially and set up. Once you open that up and set it up, you have five different job titles that you can list. Once that's on your profile, it becomes up right underneath your headline. And you can go in with the blue pencil and change that anytime you want to. So that's an easy way to do that. In terms of your resume, you're going to want to customize your resume a little bit each time, as Rex has mentioned, but the headline matches the job title. And a couple of the bulleted accomplishments underneath your summary, they support your headline. What were the accomplishments you did? Not what the duties you performed, but what were the results that you achieved that support your headline? Say it's a logistics analyst. What have you done in that area? What have you done as a financial analyst? What have you done perhaps as a business analyst? Those are different areas that you're going to have something that you have done that's an accomplishment. What did you achieve? What were the results? That's going to make it attractive to somebody because recruiters in their first six seconds or three seconds or four seconds, they're going to look at the top half of your resume. That's where we're going to spend the initial time and then scroll on down through the rest of it for the other information they're looking for to support that. Thank you. Good response. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I've seen where people have posted their resume on LinkedIn. I never did that because to me, uh, LinkedIn is your marketing tool. It's your billboard. Uh, it should not, that's just my take on it. It shouldn't be uh, yeah. your resume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Cindy asks, is it better to use the month and year or just year for time in your roles on your resume? Well, I want to hear Jeff's response for this. <laughs> well, I think all you need to have is years on there. I don't think you need to have, you don't need to put months on it, but you're going to have to know what the months are when you go to fill out a uh, job application online or when you fill out one and, and you have to handwrite one. So you need to That's have right. information, but I think on LinkedIn, just put down the years. Guys on ATS, if you leave out the months, it'll default to January. Okay. That's good input. Okay. So, um, David Sideway wants to know with custom with customized resumes, how much weight needs to go into cover letters? With online applications, are cover letters really needed as a second upload? It, can I take a shot at that one? Um, you sure. You sure can. Here's here's. Here's what people don't know. Depending on how you customize the applicant tracking system, that applicant tracking system can pull keywords out of your cover letter to add to your overall value. Now, uh, when I was at Hewlett Packard, they, they pulled keyword searches out of the cover letter. So uh, it, 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 the, the, it, it came down to how you want it how the employer wanted to configure their applicant tracking system and its keyword search. Most, uh, the, the other Fortune 500 companies that I was with 
they did not use keyword search off the cover letters, but what I what uh, uh, what Lori Davis, who usually has cover letters, you can really really scope in in your cover letter uh, using a, uh, a a T cover letter. Go over specifically the qualifications that the job description is looking for and the qualifications that you have in your experience and write down the list five or seven qualifications that the job description is looking for and how your background satisfies each one of those uh, qualifications in the job description. Okay, very good. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, one more thing. I will read every cover letter. Okay. Me well, too. Well. Me I as well. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Foster. No, I was just I was just concurring with Rex. I too love cover letters, especially you know, it's in certain positions, certain type of positions that you're hiring for. Uh, that needs to be there. It needs to be a little bit more of an explanation, especially in those leadership qualities for some of those positions. I just put in the chat box a sample T cover letter, so you can go download that. It's the uh, T cover letter that we use in our Thursday workshop uh, on res effective resumes. So um, it's there for the there for the taking, if you'd like. Yeah, and just to let everybody know, prior to this workshop session we're doing right now, uh, Locke Alderson gave a presentation at, at one o'clock, wasn't it, on at Career okay. DF Career DFW? Yes, on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, um, uh, about a, a lot. And Locke, when will you present be presenting that again? It's four weeks out. I think the next one, Terry Sullivan's doing it next Tuesday at one o'clock. And then uh, Jeff is doing it on the 7th of July, Jeff. Yes. And then the 14th, and then Ruth Lipsky. Ruth Lipsky after that, and I do it again in, in the third week in July. Okay. So on Tuesdays at 1 p.m., I would recommend you look it up on careerdfw.org. Jeff has it all listed there with the links to Zoom and every, all the information you need uh, to help you with those LinkedIn questions. Um, uh, Lisa asks, was recently let go at my 90-day probation period. Should I add this on my resume? If I don't, then it will show unemployed since last August. If I do, it can still appear as a negative as well. Um, I'd love to hear what Foster Williams' advice is to this. Foster, did you Foster get the whole question or did you want me to repeat it? Let me unmute, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead and, and repeat that, John. Okay. Uh, was recently let go at my 90-day probation period. Uh -huh. Should I add this on my resume? If I don't, then it will show unemployed since last August. If I do, it can still appear as a negative as well, because she was only 90 days at the position. Lisa asked the question. I'm not... Lisa, I'm not a I'm not a proponent of uh, going that much into detail as to why it lasted for 90 days. A lot of things that happen right now are are, are in in corporate America are crazy because Temporary. of COVID and other things. So um, the least amount of information that you can give on some such situations is better. You don't want to give too much information because people will take it and run with it. Uh, in that case, it can be too much information can be um, as bad as not enough. So uh, uh, let's side on the volatility in the um, in the um, uh, workforce right now, instead of saying, oh, well, my 90 day period is up and they got rid of me. Uh, most of the time, I think that's gonna look a little bit on the negative side. But if she doesn't include it, then she's gonna show it unemployed since last August. Mm-hmm. It, it, as long as that is, and, and Locke, I'm going to shut up and let you handle that because you're better than me. But keep that relevance there, guys. Keep If it is relevant, if that three-year, three-month period of time is relevant, you might want to add it. I'm going to shut up and, and give it to Locke now. Well, two, two thoughts on that. Jeff has already mentioned going with annual dates, so that last August is going to take her through December if it was 2019. 
the three month period, I would, I would tend to advise and find out a little bit more before advising her what to do. If it's, if it's something that she has, you put the name of the company, the dates, the location, what was her title? And spend it, spend it, let it go with that. If she's asked questions, be honest about it, but keep it short and simple. You know, that's the, the KISS principle applies here. And because recruiters want to know what you've been doing. What have you been doing? Have you been watching TV and Judge Judy on TV? Bonbons. Yeah, bonbons. <laughs> Don't forget the bonbons. No, but, but that, that's a key point because like was pointed out earlier in this session, in those 90 days, just focused on what you accomplished, what you did, what you completed, what Relevance, you- Relevance, yes. Relevant to what you did, not what you were responsible for, but what you did. Uh, and that, that can help a great deal. And then when asked questions about it, you know, it was 90 days and it just didn't work out. It wasn't the job I was promised or, hey, you know, we agreed to a mutual separation that this wasn't my kind of work. You know, yeah, you don't have more important, a lot of detail. More important is why did the job end? Did it end just because of COVID? I mean, I feel sorry for somebody who got hired in December, January, and a couple months later, the business falls apart and, you know, 20% of America is out of work now. Right. Everybody's going to understand that. So it really depends on what was the reason for the 90 days. And I think you can easily, you know, just say, well, COVID hit and the company just contracted and right. last that's one in, a, first one out. That's an interesting uh, point. I'm glad you said that, Jeff. Guys, if 20% of America has lost their jobs, doesn't that mean that a recruiter is going to be getting a whole lot more resumes now when they make a job posting? What you think? Yep. So I think if we zero in on these very things that Rex has been telling us about, we can set ourselves apart a little bit better. And I think you also, another thing I heard Monday morning, I was at a, a Zoom meeting on Monday with a bunch of uh, executives and they were talking that this one person applied for a job. There were 430 people who'd applied on the job on LinkedIn, but she had networked her way into the company, had her resume hand delivered to the HR department and HR calls her up and goes, well, I'm getting these people are contacting me saying, I need to interview you. So let's talk. Yeah. So if you want to get, if you want to get seen, you've got to network your way into a company. The power of networking. Yeah. Uh, Richard Solomon says, and this is for Locke, you no. just ran through lots of great ideas. Can you share those bullet points in a post or document, please? And that's one of the reasons why I brought up the Tuesday schedule for the one o'clock meeting uh, on Zoom. Uh, you'll be, you're doing it on a rotational basis, but each of those meetings has got uh, either Locke or another expert on, on, uh, on LinkedIn where you can gain a lot of great information. So I hope, Richard, that that's helpful for you. Um, uh, yeah, and I, we're coming to a close here. I wanna remind everybody who's on this Zoom meeting especially, is if you go open your chat and you go to the lower right hand corner, you should see a document icon and the word file and next to that three small dots. They're very pale on my screen. If you click on those dots, you should get an option to save the chat. And if you save the chat, the document that Jeff Morris posted in the chat about the sample T cover letter, you'll be able to retrieve that. Am I, am I giving them the correct direction? No, to do it, you need to download it on where the document is. You need, it, it says you should be able to click on it. Oh yeah and then you should be able to save it someplace. So that's what you want to do. You don't want to, uh, saving the chat will only save the text information, will not save the document. And okay. If you, can, if you, for some reason, it doesn't download correctly, just send me an email and I'll be glad to uh, send you the document. Okay. I just, I just uploaded a, a short PowerPoint presentation on dissecting the job posting which has in it, how do you go about taking things out of the job posting, creating a job requirements table, and then taking your, those requirements of the left column, your, the right column is how your experience matches up to those, then you can use those to punch, to pl plug it into your resume as bullet points underneath the summary. Well, that, hopefully that'll help if you download that. All right, where is it again, please, Locke? It's in the chat. Okay. Yep, I just downloaded it.
Dissecting the job posting. Yes. Okay. Well, then, when as we wrap up here, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the meeting open so people get a chance to do that. Uh, they'll have to do it on their on their uh, screen as well. So. Um, hey, John. Yes. Angie Figueredo just uh, posted an excellent question. We've been going uh, through and back and forth with that all week. I'd like to hear Rex and, and Locke's um, take on that. Okay. Uh, Angie asks, what are your thoughts on contacting the recruiter who posted job via LinkedIn to let them know you applied? I've been in talent acquisition for a very long time and never minded if someone sent me a message. I tend to agree with what Angie said about contacting them. Go ahead and contact them. We recognize that they have a job to do, and that's filling jobs, not talking to you on the, on the, uh, on, on the phone or on LinkedIn. So be patient with them because they're busy too. They have a job, and if they don't do their job, they're going to join you in looking for a job. <laughs> that's very well summarized. Yeah, very true. Yeah, if they posted via LinkedIn, uh, I would say absolutely. That's because of the platform they use. That's a that's a, a wonderful opportunity to uh, to jump in and contact them. They're fair game. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're at the end. We're run a few minutes over. And Rex, I apologize that you didn't get your full 50, 55 min minutes. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive comments. Many thanks to Rex and our esteemed panelists. Uh, from Mark and uh, great insight from Bill. Uh, thank you, Rex, and everyone for a great session. So I'm going to close this in a word of prayer, and uh, we will we will uh, wrap this one up. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, providing people who want to give of themselves, uh, share their experience, walk alongside others, give a helping hand to reach out uh, and. Uh, provide guidance to others. Thank you for everyone who took the invested their time to invest to uh, spend time on this call. Uh, Lord, we ask you to bless everyone who's been on this call, uh, who's looking for employment, guide them with wisdom, uh, guide them with insight, with patience and perseverance, uh, grant them uh, the grace to uh, just do the next right thing and they will land um, an employment opportunity that you have appointed for them uh, if they just keep their focus and faith on you. We thank you and, and we praise you in the name of Jesus, your son, our Lord. Amen. Well, uh, Rex, Locke, Foster, Jeff, thank you so much. And um, we, will, uh, we will do our best to broadcast if there's going to be another session, but at this point there is none scheduled. And again, this will be posted on Facebook under Career DFW on their page and on um, YouTube under Career USA. If you subscribe to that channel, Jeff has got a lot of great sessions posted there that uh, you can watch at your leisure, leisure and uh, it's all got a lot of great information. So uh, thank you all for being here and God bless you. Stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Thank you Thanks, for letting us serve you. Thank you.